Why? You didn't remember now? Oh, I should. Got a way to. Did you marry? Not the same she should some Thomasa. Oh, change you get to take her and go be to say, Layo Chima, please, him with only me. Lucky seven gets on with lucky minus in the Malafsa. Lucky seven's in the kitchen, showing a good engine. Lucky seven education consultancy and placement firm, the Shane Detenchi. Machigi Ledigi, Kelchi Loptutsu, Australia Gishen Gikole, Deten Benita, Visa Suzuni Japtusapu in Machigi Migden Sora, Australia Lupecha Laponomi, Loptu Kazumbiru, Conserentotobe, Charovidi, Horre de Sutup Subsoni the in Kazal Vakinigi Dendo, Yondal Chargo, www.lucky7ecpf.com, Yana, Shamsil Lukidibi, Jitin Angdan Suda, Tewazena Amma. Darwin, Sakara teach me. Yes. Welcome to Hello from Bhutan. I am Namgizam. Today on the podcast, I have with me a very dear friend and a former colleague who used to bully a lot at the Bhutan Broadcasting Service. He's won several recognitions now and actually done a first two times uh, for Bhutan. So his documentary, Mountain Man, is uh, has officially entered the Oscars after winning at the Doc NYC Festival, the New York uh, Festival, which is a prestigious festival. It's the first Bhutanese documentary to enter the Oscars. Congratulations on that, Barai. Thank you. Uh, it's Arun Barai, but I call him <laughs> Barai. <laughs> And the other first that uh, Barai managed to pull off was at Sundance. Again, the first Bhutanese documentary to premiere at the Sundance yes. Film Festival. Again, really, really prestigious. Dashi Tele, on all of your achievements, Barai, uh, was it planned? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, thank you so much for having me on your show. I mean, you don't really plan it in the sense that, I mean, you want your film to do really well. Because as an independent filmmaker, uh, the, always the aim is that your film premieres at a big film festival and it does this festival circuit and then maybe like a big distributor notices it and then you know like uh, uh, does a cinema release or does a, maybe like a OTT Netflix Amazon release mm -hmm. that's always your goal and mm -hmm. you want to take the film to as many people as possible uh, but with uh, with Mountain Man I mean it was a surprise that uh, it got uh, uh, it got qualified for the Oscars. It was a surprise because I sent it to Doc NYC, and then uh, after a month they told that oh it's selected, and then after another month they said that oh it won the grand jury prize at the festival, so your film is now um, eligible for the Oscars. So um, yeah, I mean I was really happy. I mean for me, like uh, actually. Uh, um, there are many great festivals, you know, mm -hmm. like in uh, like when you talk about film festivals, like there is uh, like Berlin, Sundance, mm -hmm. uh, Venice, Cannes, you know, like there are some great festivals and there are a lot of Bhutanese filmmakers whose films have been there already. Like, I mean, like Dichin Roger, like mm -hmm. Dashi Gelsen and all. Uh, but the first documentary film. Uh, yes, yes, I mean, yeah, it, 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 yeah. <laughs> so of don't downplay your own <laughs> yeah, achievements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. I mean, I mean, I'm st I'm super proud that mm. that this film, which I co-directed with, with a Hungarian friend of mine, mm. uh, Agent of Happiness, has been selected for Sundance, for, mm. for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And Mountain Man, uh, let's go back to Mountain Man, which yeah. is uh, yeah. has entered the Oscars now, 2025, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a one-man effort, you were mm -hmm. telling me. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to film a uh, glaciologist, uh, Finso? Like, wh what made you do this? So uh, the main idea, it came because uh, Funso is actually uh, my high school classmate. So, oh. so we studied together in 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 Jing, Jing High School in in, in the East. Mm -hmm. uh, we did our eleven and twelve together, and I knew him like uh, really closely at that time. And I kind of followed his journey to become the become one of the few glaciologists in the country. You know, so so I always knew about his work, and then uh, that's how I kind of approached him. And at that point, I had already done a, a big feature documentary. And I wanted to do something kind of uh, on my own. I wanted to go back to my roots in the sense that, you know, like when I used to work in BBS, uh, many times, you know, like you shoot yourself, you write the script yourself, you edit yourself. <laughs> you know? 
I, I wanted to do that again, mm. like one more time. And then with this person who is a, who was a close friend of mine, mm. it was easier to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, do this film a little differently in the sense that my previous film, it was an observational film where I was uh, kind of not interfering with, 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 with the reality and I was just... The next shoot. Guardian, you're the talking about Guardian. the next Guardian. Yes, so I was just shooting with, like, with, with my characters for hours, trying to get the moments. But in, in, in this film, I wanted to kind of give agency to the main character himself. So that's why I, I was thinking of something which is like a very collaborative effort. And then that's how I thought that why not give a phone to, to, to the main character and he films himself. Mm. And in reality as well, he was actually already shooting videos of himself and sending it to, to his daughter, mm. uh, uh, to his daughter Yang Chin. And I thought that it could be a part of the film. So mm. that's how I said, okay, I'll sh film you when I'm up in the mountains, but after a certain point, I'll let you go. Mm. You take my phone mm. and then you film. Oh. <laughs> uh, like you film yourself, right. your journey. Right. And then uh, he anyway shares it with his daughter. So mm. I, I shoot the reactions of his daughter as well. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to give agency to, to, to the main character and mm. make it like a collaboration, like a really mm. like a collaborative effort between him and me. So mm. that's how, that was how, the idea for Mountain Man came about. Mm. Kucho Yang Chen, Ozo Chilean Skipa, Tava, Ega Kiam Satrika. Ada Ega Kiam, Kucho. Ona Chuncha Shesh, Ona Chunta Ni, Ona Kiam Satrika Shesh, Ona Kata Ni River, Kata Ni Shim Lam. Jim Gatani on a cloud lagos on the cloud regard at the Lille, like a life session. Cloud shake bomb. I love blue ship of Pin Gotcha. Ah, Tonga Tonga Blue ship, Jack Pinaji, or the video, Jot Pajas, you could deliver. Yeah. What about the climate change angle to it? Was that your idea or did it just happen naturally? So, I mean, I because I was following uh, Funso's work very closely, I knew that uh, he was going up to monitor the, the glaciers and, mm. and also the lakes and then... Um, uh, and there was always this uh, fear within him mm. because uh, he's, I mean, he's a Buddhist, he's a, he, he's, a, he's a religious person. And he was all, he had this fear that, you know, he has to enter these lakes literally and then touch it and measure it. And he was kind of, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, he's like, he was, he was a little scared in the sense that he thought that he's desecrating this lake and, uh, you know, the deities. And in fact, he used to also say that sometimes the locals, uh, around there, they used to say that, see, there's this guy coming from Timpu and desecrating the lake. Oh. And then because of this, we are having these bad weather patterns. And, you know, like uh, sometimes people would blame him as well. So when I was talking to him personally, that's what he said. So I thought this is very interesting that here is this like a climate scientist, like and then who is going up and doing this, uh, uh, who is measuring the lakes. But at the same time, at the back of his head, he's very scared. He has this dilemma whether to go and do this job or not. So I thought, I thought in the Bhutanese context, it was very interesting to tell a climate, tell a story of climate change through through this angle. Mm, why did you not yeah. have this part in the documentary? Then this is so interesting. Yeah, I mean, it does come out in a very yeah, but a subtle way. Right. Uh, like uh, Yang Chen uh, says this in, mm. in her voiceover. Yes. In her in her, in her voice. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 there. Yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, how fascinating. Yang
बच्चों की माची दादा मई पाना तेल लम जो दो ये पे मैं You know, you have this really wide shot of him walking in the snow, mm -hmm. and I was watching this documentary with my husband, mm -hmm. and he falls in the snow, and I missed that. And he's like, "Did you see? He fell in the snow." Mm -hmm. And we didn't go to the next uh, footage, mm -hmm. the next video, and he was like, "Wait, wait, wait!" And he actually took it back to mm -hmm. that spot where he mm -hmm. fell, and he limps after that, yes, right? Yes. So he limped all the way back down from up there. Yes. yes wow. And yes. you followed him. Yes. It, was, it must have been a difficult journey. Yes, it was a difficult journey, and we had footage of it, but then in the end. Uh, because it's a short film, and I really didn't want to make it more than twenty minutes, we decided to use only a part of the. A part right, of the oh, but you footage. did the right thing. You're in the mm -hmm. Oscars now, but right? Mm -hmm. Like, who would have thought? <laughs> Not that I don't know your abilities, because yeah. I always tell TP, I was like, yeah, but right, was such a good documentary maker from the time he was mm -hmm. at BBS. Like, mm -hmm. it was you and DG who showed me how to do documentaries, right? Because mm -hmm. I was more of a talk show person, all of that, and the method. I mean, for those of you who are watching this podcast or listening to this podcast, but right, didn't just wake up one day and decided he wanted to make a documentary. He's been at it for like. How many years, Barai? Many, many years now. You I don't mean, want to share it. You don't want to appear old. Uh, see, uh, I mean, since uh, 2007, I've yeah. been doing this. Like, and try subtracting now. Yeah, even, even when I was in BBS, two my, decades. Yeah, my interest was always to be behind the camera mm. and tell tell stories. Yeah. I mean, so literally, I've been doing this. I mean, since 2007. Now let's talk about the agent of happiness before we come to me asking you to compare your experiences yeah. with the three films. What is the agent of happiness about? Because Bhutanese, we have not seen this. Many of us have not seen this. Film, yeah, and this yeah. was the one that premiered at Sundance. Yes. So, Agent of Happiness is my actually my like latest film. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a feature documentary. Uh, I co-directed this film with with a Hungarian classmate of mine. Actually, mm -hmm. I studied together with her. Uh, the film is it's about a happiness agent mm -hmm. <laughs> who goes around doing the happiness survey, and through him we get to meet different people from different walks of life in, mm. in Bhutan mm. and we kind of uh, we are reminded I think through this process about our own individual happiness like I think when when you kind of hear people talk about their happiness and what makes them happy you sometimes are reminded of the things that used to make you happy mm. you know, before and you forget because mm. you're in such a rush you have such big dreams mm. you live in the city right and mm. so so when you go to the village and, and you listen to people then mm. i think i think that's what you are and that was really the aim of my of my film mm. so through this main character umber we meet people from different walks of life and then we also enter deep inside their lives and examine what makes them happy mm. uh, Maybe like for the government, the, the stats it, it's very important. Like like, uh, but for 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 individuals, maybe the, the emotions, the dreams are more mm. more important. Mm. So, it, this is actually uh, it's a hybrid documentary in in the sense that I think ninety five percent of the film is actually a documentary. Mm. But these two guys who do the happiness survey, they used to work for the happiness center in Bumthang before, and then we casted them. And then we asked them to do do the survey on our behalf, and so through them we use them as a device, uh, as a tool to enter into the different li mm. lives of lives of different mm. people. So that's that's the agent. This, but the main sorry, yes. but the main <laughs> character himself, mm. he's in search of his own happiness in mm. the sense that he's in search for love. Oh. So so in in the film you kind of discover whether. He finds his love mm. in the end. Of it. He's forty years old, right? Yes, yes. So he's looking for love, like yes. at forty years old. Yeah, like me, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still. No, no. I mean, I mean, we are almost the same age. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, so was that created? Like, did you like superimpose your own lives, like you know, searching for love onto him? I mean, was that like the hybrid? I think you always do that in some way, mm. in the sense that I think in documentary that's the beautiful part, mm. because you're always searching for a personal connection to the main mm. character. You know, mm. like so why why am I like for in Mountain Man, for example, I was connected to Funso because he was a classmate of mine like many years ago. Mm. So I was really personally connected with him. Mm. Uh, with Amber, I think uh, I, I was connected also because he 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 is desperate to get married. I'm not so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, but, but I mean, I can relate to him because I, I, I at least uh, from the point of view of society, like I'm, I'm not married yet. Mm. Like I'm, I'm also like almost forty, like mm. so I can really get kind of like I could relate to him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, interesting. Thanks yeah. for sharing that personal mm. bit. <laughs> I don't think you've shared that with anybody who's no. talked to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the advantage of being a friend. Interviewing <laughs> yeah. a friend, it comes out. Yeah. Uh, but this document really took a lot of time. Like unlike the next Guardian as well as Mountain Man, like how you said six years. Yes. So uh, most of the time, uh, at least in my case, I spend a lot of time without the camera, with, mm. the, with, with my characters. I'm trying to actually build a friendship with them. So I'm actually trying to make them very comfortable because I, I shoot like really intimate moments from, from their lives. Um, so, you know, like I think for the first one and a half year, I was only making friends with, with these people, like with the main character especially. And then we went out on the survey, but then, you know, like you, uh, we were not getting the moments that we wanted. So we did a lot, like many, many surveys. And then we, uh, during the survey, we found interesting characters who became the side characters of the film. Mm -hmm. So with them also, I had to make a relationship and I had to go back to them. And then there was a lot of filming and I was simultaneously actually editing the film as well. Yeah. Uh, the editing of the film was taking place in Hungary, like simultaneously. So it was a really good process because we knew what we wanted, what we wanted to reshoot and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a, I think, a, I personally think that a good feature documentary minimum, it's like, a, it's, it takes three years, I think. Mm. I mean, that's what at least I know a lot of documentary filmmakers doing that, like they take at least three years. Mm. So I, I took six years in total, total, but in between there was COVID as well. So I think it was a, it was a, I mean, yeah. I mean, that deleted it, it's, a, it's, well. a, it's a it's a process. It's a mm. it's a risk you take mm. because in the end you might not make the film. Mm. <laughs> like it, right. it might not come out like how you wanted. Right. It. But I'm happy that it came out like the way like mm. we wanted it. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah, like I'm very happy. You mentioned a risk, uh, right? I mean, it was a risk you took. Both of us were at BBS. I jumped yeah. ship first. Yeah. And then you followed after. Yeah. Um, you took a risk, right? And it's paying off now. Yeah. But not many people are in a position to be able to take that risk. Yeah. Um, I am very proud of you for doing that and for, I mean, actually now you're role modeling to people who will come after you that it's worth um, doing this because it wasn't, I mean, we didn't have people who were making documentaries full time in the past. Do you remember? I mean, yeah, when we were in BBS, yeah. we, we didn't have any documentary filmmakers no. outside of Bhutan, no. outside of BBS, sorry, no. not outside of Bhutan, who we could be like, oh, I mean, so many internationally, right? Yeah. Was there somebody you thought, oh, I would like to make films like that person? Did you have somebody who sort of inspired you to make that leap as well? Actually, no. Actually, at the time, mm. I, I didn't really think uh, much. Actually, what happened was when I was in BBS only, I, I, was apl I applied to this course called as Doc Nomads, which is like an international master program uh, in, in Europe, like an Erasmus Mundus program where six months happened in, in Budapest, in, in, in Brussels, and six months in Lisbon. And, you know, like it was an international class. Mm -hmm. And I really learned a lot from these, these guys, like mm. who, who were traveling and making films. Mm -hmm. And then I was also making films simultaneously with them. And that's when I actually discovered like creative documentary, like something which was different from what I was actually doing in BBS, like uh, not so factual content, but more... Um, Emotional, I would say, or mm. more, so so you know that kind of uh, that kind of films. I kind of uh, got discovered. I yeah. discovered like more European cinema, let's say, mm. and European documentaries, and I knew that okay, th these people are actually getting funding from like abroad, like from like foundations and from film festivals, and so I kind of knew about it, and I came back and then I worked in BBS for a year, and then I really didn't. I think at that time, I didn't really feel like staying back in BBS because in BBS you get such, such a short amount of time to mm. do, do, do your work. So mm. you really don't get to express so yourself. So deadlines, deadlines, yeah, deadlines. You don't mm. really get to build relationship with your characters. You, I mean, you don't really know what you're exactly doing. I mean, <laughs> if you ask, somebody asks you what is the, your film about, you can't really say because mm. you never really took the time to think about the film or the subject. So that's when I decided to leave. It was like, um, it was a risk, yeah. Mm. yeah I, I just, I thought, but I had seen people outside who were kind of independent filmmakers mm. who were trying to get funding from, from abroad. Mm. And so that's how I started actually. Um, I applied to a fund called the Itva Bertha Fund, which mm. is like a, I'm just saying it here because there might be young people who, who might want, Thanks for sharing. Who, who might want to <laughs> apply to that fund. Right. So it's called the Itva Bertha Fund. It's mm. a 
fund from from uh, from the Netherlands, mm. and that was my first step because they gave me a little bit of money, and then I could make a trailer, I could do a proposal, then I could use that to send it out to more funding mm. uh, like funders, and then they supported me. So mm. that's how it started. And then after you do your first film, uh, people abroad they start noticing you, and then sometimes you get a producer who wants to fund your films as well. Mm. So that's how like we, I also got a got a producer for, for our second film. Mm. Yeah. The next Guardian was a difficult journey for you, but right? So yes. it wasn't just like the risk ended with you leaving BBS, you yeah, know? Yeah. You took a huge risk with the next Guardian as well. Yes. And if I remember correctly, you were telling me that you initially did not start wanting to make the next Guardian. It was yes. something else, right? Yes. And you went through a really difficult period as yes. a filmmaker at that point. Would you yeah. like to share that experience also? Yes, I think the beauty... Uh, and the problem also, I think the difficulty and the beauty, let's say, of, of making documentaries is that, uh, you, that you don't know where it, it will take you. You know, like mm. you start with an idea. That's how I, what I do at least. Mm. I, I only have an idea. And then uh, the actual script, actually, it comes during the editing period, mm. like the ed editing process. Like before, you're only shooting with this big idea in, in your head. Like mm. uh, you have a point of view and then you look at everything through this point of view, through this lens, and then you... You, you try to film everything like that. So so, so, it, uh, so with The Next Garden, it started with a completely different film because I wanted to do a film about young uh, under 13 girls who were living in Gelefu and, uh, and they were part of the first uh, trained Bhutanese football team, mm. you know, like the women team. Mm. They wanted to make the women team of the future, let's mm. say. So that's mm. what like uh, BFF wanted to do. Mm. So that's how I reached there and then I started to follow someone. Like a really, I wanted to do a football film. Mm. Uh, like a successful football film mm. where, you know, you see someone come from the village, you mm. follow her and maybe she goes for a it's tournament. The hero abroad. of the story. Then. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> at the end maybe wins a tournament or something happens. Right, right. But then, uh, because she was a young girl initially, she was very excited to be part of the film, but after some time you realize that she doesn't really want to be part of the film. No. As you are all the time with your camera and you just make are really uncomfortable mm. so uh, so with one of them I went to her uh, to the to her village in, in Bumtang and that's where I uh, discovered a completely different story I, I met her brother her father and, and they were part of a of, of a family who were taking care of this 1000 year old, old monastery mm. in Bumtang and mm. so I was like okay and then the brother wanted to play football and the father didn't want him to play football and uh, he, uh, the sister was living the brother's dream, so mm. it was like a triangle, mm. and, you know, like a, so. As this, there is this microcosm, you know, this mm. this monastery mm. where we can talk about like generation gap in mm. Bhutan, mm. like just through this little mm. monastery. Mm. So that's how the story changed. Mm. So I think as a documentary filmmaker, I think you need to be willing to kind of go where the story takes you. Mm. Of course, it's an expensive process as well. <laughs> 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 because uh, you, you need to earn, like, I mean, you need to kind of apply to funds. Mm. And sometimes uh, if you start with an idea, then they will say, what happened to the initial idea? Mm. Why did you pursue this? Mm. But as long as you are able to explain that and as long as you are able to take the risk, then mm. I think uh, the rewards are big in mm. the sense, sense that you, make, you can make a film that people can remember, mm. I think. Je 
I really, I really enjoyed the next Guardian. Is it available anywhere for people to watch? It's available on, on Samu now. Samu. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You can watch the next Guardian on uh, Samu. You can watch Mountain Man on the Guardian. Yes. I've seen both of the films and I've enjoyed them. It's very two, it's two different types of storytelling. Um, it's done by the same guy. Now I'm waiting to see Agent of Happiness and I want to see whether it's different from the other two films that you've already made. For yourself, um, what has been, which one did you enjoy making the most of the three? That's a really good question. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think I, I enjoyed doing this last film the most mm -hmm. because this is uh, kind of a, like a conceptual kind of film because in the sense that I normally like to do very observational kind of films like where I film the characters and let them talk and I don't interfere with reality, you know, like... Uh, mm. Uh, because I'm a very shy person generally mm. and mm. it helps me, <laughs> it helps me, you know, like when you go sit and people mm. don't notice you, so you mm. become like a fly on mm. the wall, right, mm. you're like just observing mm. and then then later you weave the footage together to make a film, like you mm. build the, the, the narrative arc of the film that way. Mm. Uh, but in this case, I, I think I was very sure, or we were very sure, me and my co-director Dori, we were very sure of what we want to do right mm. from the beginning, like we could imagine what's going to happen in the film. Mm. So we decided to use voiceover for some of the characters. Mm. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we wanted to um, kind of um, use these two agents. We casted the two agents, you know, we wanted them to uh, go around do, doing this, this service. So it was really, uh, it was very conceptual. It's, I think it's, it's, a, it's still a documentary, mm. but it has a lot of fictional elements in it mm. as well. Mm. And so we were very playful and it's also a road movie. Mm. Where there's these two guys going around doing mm. the survey, we are following them. The two of them used to be like high school classmates before, so they are very beautiful, dynamic, they are mm. funny together. Mm. So it has, this film also has a lot of humor. Mm. Um, so, and it's also about happiness and mm. all of us, I think, can relate mm. to a topic like happiness. So it was, a, it was a really, also I think as a filmmaker, I've become a little bit more mature and mm. I know that if I'm going through this track, I know that, okay, okay, I think this is not the right track, we can go back, mm. let's redo it. Mm. And I'm more brave also, I think mm. now to kind of change. Because, I see. Uh, yeah, when you are starting out, you are not so brave mm. because you are not sure whether you're doing the right thing or mm. not. So whatever you are doing, you tend to do that. Mm. And not, not like you are not willing to change, but mm. this time, I was willing to change with how the story evolves. Mm. And then it was a longer period for, for sure. Mm. It took a longer period of time, mm. but I, I enjoyed it more. Mm. Yeah. I see. Yeah. In these two documentaries that you have, The Next Guardian, I actually wrote about it on my Facebook page as well. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, and also in, because I've read a review of Agent of Happiness, uh, you actually have queer voices, right? Yes. Like your protagonist yes. in The Next Guardian is yes. also queer, yes. right? Yes. Although. Yes he, she doesn't come on yes. camera and say, I am like this, yes, you know? Yes. Um, and even in Agent of Happiness, you have our very famous Dishan Saldan yes, taking yes. the survey, right, questionnaire. Yes, and yes. do you want to share a little bit about that? Like yes. about Dishan Saldan and Agent of Happiness and how the experience was? Because you were saying you talked to so many interesting people and yes. she's definitely an interesting person. Yes, yes. So actually, um, when, I, when I screened the next garden here, uh, um, because it's a it's it's a story of a of a of a of a of a transgender boy who I mean, you know like who 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 wants to play play football basically and then so uh, I really wanted to show it here to the to the to the queer community here in in, in Thimpu and that's when I was screening it here I actually uh, invited mm. Dijan Selden as well and she came and watched it as well mm. and then after she watched it I mean we talked and I, I really liked her and you know like mm. we we had a very nice conversation and she was always at the back of my mm. head mm. before mm. <laughs> so I was like um, when we started uh, doing the Agent of Happiness 
always in my th- in my head I was like okay we could also do a survey with with the chain you know mm. like how how she is. so uh, it it's also a process of casting for me because I don't know how she is going to be in, in front of the camera mm. but if she's going to be interesting if she's going to be expressive I know that okay I'll, one of the portraits will be like hers mm. so she will be one of the side characters mm. so when we went and did this survey with her and she was so expressive and she was so honest and mm. uh, Uh, the survey itself was like so beautiful it could be like a, almost like a 30 minutes uh, survey on its own is mm. already a film you know like mm. so then i was like okay so we need to go behind the the numbers like the for example she tells that she, uh, her depression level is this like she's this you know like mm. this is uh, you know so like we wanted to go behind the numbers and then we wanted to kind of enter in and show like a kind of a public figure you know like mm. uh, like uh, the her, her real self so mm. you know like that's how that's how we and it is a it is a beautiful process because um, for the last two three years we were on and off going to her house became part of her family like we know her mother really well and we are so impressed by her mother and her uh, beautiful like um, traditional wisdom mm. uh, her acceptance of teaching so you know like so everything together So that's how we decided to make her as one of our like, Thanks for documenting characters. this and telling the story. I, as an ally, really appreciate the fact that you have this in your documentary films, you know. Mm. What next? Oh, uh, next, uh, uh, basically, I mean, I think the Agent of Happiness, it will be, uh, go out in different festivals around the world. So I'll be traveling with the film, uh, talking about the film generally mm. and hoping that a big distribution company comes and takes the film. Um, and then also making a document is such a hard, difficult process, like you burn out after a while. I would like to take like maybe like a year's break. <laughs> and, and find and, your and, love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, also, and also think, uh, think about, <laughs> think about uh, the next film maybe. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's, it's a vicious cycle. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vicious and beautiful cycle. Like yeah. I look forward to what comes at the end of it, but I'm really looking forward to watching The Agent of Happiness. I mean, the reviews and the things you've shared, I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, thank you so much for giving us your time. I wish you all the best. I'll be following your journey at the international film circuits. Thank you. Uh, I keep an eye on you. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, much. Barai, and good thank luck. You. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I want to say this again, uh, but Rai's documentaries are fantastic. You can find the next Guardian streaming on Samo. Uh, you can find The Mountain Man on The Guardian. I did share it on my social media as well, but I'll share it again. It will be up on my YouTube channel for those of you who are listening to the podcast. Uh, I will also connect you to Aaron Barai if you're interested. Barai is on all social media platforms. including Twitter which I, Twitter or X, which I discovered just a few days ago. Sorry, but right. <laughs> and I followed him back, but he's on Instagram, uh, on uh, Twitter, X, um, also on Facebook. Thank you so much for giving me your time.